and welcome. I'm here today with Karen Peterson. Karen, thank you so much for joining us today. Can you share a little bit about yourself and your background so we get to know you a little bit more as we kick off this video? Well, thanks for the opportunity for my being here today. It's a pleasure. And I just wanted to share a little bit about my background. I've worked in higher education my entire career. I currently serve as the Chief Knowledge Officer for the Online Learning Consortium. But prior to that, I started as a faculty mem member many years ago and moved into administrative positions. So I've worked in both public and private higher education institutions in the areas of distance learning, online learning, um, serving adult learners, military and the vet veteran community. So I have a lot of experience in those areas. So it's a pleasure for me to be here today. Thanks, Karen. One of the things that students have stated in the past is that an online classroom can seem like a very lonely place at times. How do you set up your online classroom when you're teaching um, so students want to come and interact with you and others in class? Well, I think that human touch is so critical and when we think about online classrooms and we need to think about them being student-centered and when I think about student-centeredness I oftentimes think about the framework uh, known as the community of inquiry and there's really three components to the community of inquiry you have the social presence. So as a faculty member, it's critical that you're there, that you're present in your classroom, um, that that perception of that social presence is there. The second component is the cognitive presence. And this is where we're looking at your interaction with students, uh, with material, student-to-student -student interaction. In this particular case, um, I often ask faculty to develop a matrix and really begin to dissect their course and think about each week, what am I doing for my interaction with students, student-to-student -student interaction, um, as well as students' uh, interaction with external materials. So thinking about that matrix can help you really with that social presence and with that um, level of engagement. The third area for an active learning environment is really that area where you have the teaching presence. Um, and so that, that is critical when we think about an online class, when we think about a successful online class where students want to come, they want to engage, um, they're active in their participation, and everyone is included. Thanks, Karen. The community of inquiry model is, is really a fantastic way to think about the setup to implementation of your course. So when you're developing that, how do you create that supportive environment in your classroom so students feel like they can share their, their thoughts and experiences while they're learning. Are there any examples that you could share with us? Well, I think one of the things that we really need to think about is we need to think about how we create a safe learning environment. And when I say a safe learning environment, it's really one in which all perspectives, all opportunities for engagement are encouraged um, and they are um, an active part of the learning experience. And so I, I've seen faculty oftentimes deploy what we call a net etiquette when we think about discussions. Um, in a classroom, we often we have those visual cues uh, in a discussion and we're able to understand tones of voice and we're able to understand um, sort of the interaction because we have those visual cues and we have the nonverbal cues as well. When we think about an environment where learners are at a distance, um, we have to set up uh, an environment in which that engagement in discussions um, is really encouraged. And how do we do that? We do that by being very clear about our expectations. Um, so I've seen uh, tools that are used by faculty when they develop um, their net etiquette, um, the 12 points to net etiquette, something like that, the 10 points, um, and just laying that out and being clear about your expectations, how to be inclusive, how to value diversity, all of those things we have to think about even when we have learners at a distance. Thanks, Karen. So in terms of, of 
setting up your class, and we've talked about community framework and, and netiquette. Um, are there any other strategies that you've used to personalize your classroom um, that, that really make students feel like they're welcome when they come into class? I think it's important that first experience, first impressions are so critical. And so when we think about that first impression, it's really about um, do you have an inviting video that encourages and pulls learners into the classroom? Um, have you laid out the class in a way that allows that learner to understand what's being ex uh, the expectations of the course? They're able to kind of look ahead. Um, a lot of learners that I work with, they're inquisitive. And so providing them enough that kind of piques their interest, um, gets them encouraged, gets them engaged, gets them into the readings, um, that's critical. So I, I like that sort of thinking about the first impression uh, because you can't have a do-over. Uh, and it's important that that be part of your thinking from the very first moment a learner walks into the class. Thank you, Karen, for providing us some ideas for creating a supportive environment and for personalizing that classroom experience. As we wrap up today, are there any concluding thoughts you might have on personalizing the online classroom we haven't had a chance to cover? I think it's really your word personalizing. And when we think about a, a class in which we're encouraging that engagement, we're encouraging the inclusiveness, uh, we're encouraging diversity. Um, it is really important to think about that personalization, whether it's in the comments that you provide to learners um, as an outgrowth of their work, um, whether it's one-on-one -on -one communication, group communication. It's important to think about sort of how this looks and feels. Uh, I think, Sandra, you said it. Oftentimes, an online class can feel like a very lonely place, but it doesn't need to be a lonely place. So encouraging, engaging, um, and continually um, thinking about your presence is critical for success. Thank you so much, Karen, for being with us and sharing your great ideas and tips. Thank you so much. I appreciated the opportunity.